Everybody, welcome to another fantastic episode of Super Shares. My name is Joe Marquez, Director of Academic Innovation for Q, and today we are continuing our series on fantastic forms. All the different ways that you can use Google Forms in your classroom for various things that you're wanting to automate or get done. Now, before we get to today's uh, fantastic forms activity, using Form Eliminator, um, I want to remind everybody that registration for Fall Q, yes, our Northern California Conference, is happening right now. So if you head over to fallq.org, you can sign up today. Uh, the conference is going to be happening October 22nd and 23rd of this year. And yes, it will be in person. And we are hosted by the lovely educators at the Teacher College of San Joaquin. And it's going to be a fantastic event. Um, we have a really great uh, surprise for you uh, for lunch. As you all know, uh, at Fall Q, we always supply lunch with your registration ticket on both days. This year, we have a very special surprise. And when we nail that down, uh, finalize everything, I will absolutely make sure to tell you why it's going to be a fantastic lunch. But let's go ahead and get started with our fantastic forms for today. So today, we're going to be looking at something called an add-on. Now, an add-on is something that you add on to Google Forms so that it does something different, a different capability uh, for uh, your needs. And today's needs is this. Imagine that you want to set up parent meetings uh, for your school and you have uh, times Monday through Friday that you have available set aside for parent meetings, whether that's a phone call meeting, whether it's a virtual meeting, whether it's an in-person uh, face-to-face -face meeting, you still need to have time scheduled uh, for that allotment of time to talk to your parents. Um, and there's a lot of different uh, third-party form uh, companies that are out there where you can kind of get that done. But I want to show you how you can keep it within your Google ecosystem. So let's go ahead and take a look right here. So you can create the form right out of your Google Drive by going to New uh, and Google Forms. Or you can create it just out of your Omni box right here by typing in form.new to bring it up right here. And so here is your form. And I'm going to call this uh, meeting for parents just right there. And notice when I title it here, it automatically pops up down there. Now, the first thing I want to absolutely check is my settings because sometimes your uh, school domain, your admin has it set up to all of these uh, tools, all, all the Google Docs and Google Slides and Google Forms, all of it is locked down to your domain. And if you're going to be sending this to parents, you don't want to have it locked into that domain. So make sure you go to settings and then look under responses and look where it says requires sign in restricts users. Make sure that is turned off. Otherwise your parents will not be allowed to fill out this form. Um, and uh, you know, it, it also asks to collect email addresses. I recommend keeping that on. Uh, you may want to email a parent if you have to cancel the meeting. Um, if you want, uh, the form to automatically send uh, the responses to the parents when they're done, you, you're going to need that email. So I do recommend keeping that email section turned on. Uh, the first question right here, I'm going to put down first name. There we go. And I'm just going to duplicate this and I'm going to change first to last. Last name. And then finally, you know what? Sometimes parents don't have an email. Uh, so maybe you just want a phone number right here. And notice all of these are required. Parents should have an email at this point, right? And uh, they should have a phone number that you can contact them. So I always recommend please keep that required, but it's completely up to you. You can definitely come over down here at the bottom and you can remove 
that option if you don't want it. Okay, so next is the uh, what they do you want to meet. All right, what day do you want to meet? And look, it already has all of your options. I'm going to go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. All right there. Now, here's the time that we're going to actually separate sections. We want people to be able to pick Monday and then be able to pick a time. Okay? Uh, I'm going to show you this. We're going to use an add-on called uh, Choice Eliminator, which is going to, like, if a parent comes in and chooses Monday at 9 o'clock, it deletes that nine o'clock option. So nobody else can select Monday at nine o'clock. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a section by selecting this add section option right here, just like that. And I'm going to call this section Monday time selection. That's just going to be the time. You can put a description, please select Dot, 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 dot. Whatever you want to do down there um, for, for your parents. And then now you want to add the selection. Now, the choice eliminator that we are going to use, it, there, they, they, you, there is a known bug to it. And the bug normally happens when you're using multiple choice. Um, so to eliminate this bug, we're going to select a, as a drop down. Okay. Now, you can come in here and start adding the times that you're available. If, if you're available on Monday at 8 a.m., just type in 8 a.m. and then just hit next. If you want an hour buffer or a half hour buffer, if you don't want to stack them on, then you do nine or you can do 8.30 a.m. And, and, and notice it's going to take a little bit of time. And you have to title this, select a Monday time below and all the way through. If you've done this before, you can come over here to import questions. Find where you've already uh, asked these questions. Notice here it is, select Monday times. I'm just going to select that, import, and boom. All of my times are already there. So if you've already done that before, you don't have to retype them. You can import from another one. And that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to have it imported over. So I'm going to delete this question. Now, what we're going to do is something that is called something that is called a section-based answer. If somebody selects Monday, we want it to automatically come to this Monday selection. Right. So what we need to do is make a different section for every day. Now, you don't have to come up here, add a new section and I'll do all this stuff. All we're going to do is duplicate these entire sections. So I'm going to click duplicate. Boom. And all I do is come down wherever it says Monday. I'm going to type Tuesday. Tuesday time selection, wherever it says Monday, I'm going to type Tuesday. all the way down, boom. And now I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna duplicate, and you guessed it, wherever it says Tuesday, I'm gonna type Wednesday. And same thing here, wherever it says Tuesday, I'm gonna type Wednesday. And guess what? Yeah, we're gonna duplicate it one more time to Thursday. And Thursday. there and one last time duplicate section and Friday. Now the great thing about this is you can come in here and if if you have a prep on, on any of these days or there's any days that you can't meet uh, because you have team meetings or things like that, you can come in here and and change those times based upon the days that you have times. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is create one last section and call and call this comment section. You know, sometimes parents want to leave you a comment about why they are asking for the meeting or, or maybe something specifically they would like to talk to you about. Um, so I'm just going to come down here under section based. I'm just going to leave this as a paragraph. Please leave a comment below. or hit 
submit form. Boom. And I'm not going to make this question required because if they don't want to leave a comment, they don't need to leave a comment. So I do not make that question required. Now look what we can do here. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to select section-based answer. And if they select Monday, boom, we're going to send them to the Monday selection times. If they're going to get Tuesday, the Tuesday selection times. Wednesday, Thursday, and you guessed it, Friday. Boom, just like that. The last thing we want to do is if they're done, if they if they've selected Monday and they select their time, we don't want them to now have to select a time for Tuesday. And so after this section, we're gonna send them to the comment section. We're gonna do that for each one. Comment section, comment section, and comment section. And lastly. You could leave that one, but I'm just going to go, oh, comment section, boom. And so after any of those selections, they're going to come to the comment section. So that is uh, your your um, ending point of reference where all these are going to go. Now, here's the last thing we want to do. We want, if a parent comes in here, well, let me show you. Let me let me really quickly show you what, what, what happens here. So I'm, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to type in my name or my, my email. There we go. Type in my name here, my last name, my phone number. And let's say I want to meet on Wednesday. Next, choose a time for Wednesday. Uh, I want to meet at 11 o'clock. Click next. And then I'm going to hit submit. Boom. Done. Just like that. Um, now, watch. What should happen is we want, and I'm just going to show you this, just so you see, what we would want to happen here is as soon as we selected that Wednesday at 11, it should disappear. Watch, because we haven't added anything that 11 o'clock is still there. And you don't want to double book. You don't want to have two parents coming in at the same time. So let me show you what we are going to do. We are going to come down here to add-ons. Okay, come all, all, come all the way over here to these three dots. And you're going to select add-ons. Just like this. And you're going to select choice. Just type in choice. You'll see all these different things come up. Notice I've installed quite a few. I've played around with all these other ones. And, and I know Choice Eliminator, you look at all these other ones and Choice Eliminator only has a 2.7 rating. You're like, oh, I don't wanna use that one. It's only 2.7. It, it's because of that bug I talked to you about, about. A lot of people use multiple choice. And we want it to be a dropdown. A dropdown will help to eliminate the bug, but you know, a lot of times people just, get, you know, they get, it doesn't work, so they moved it. You want to install this into your um, uh, add-on browser. And once you've done that, you'll see a little puzzle piece right up here. And you want to select Choice Eliminator. It's Choice Eliminator Lite because it's very few options. And that's what I like about it is it's just we want them to eliminate these options. So I'm going to select Choice Eliminator right here for our options. It's going to ask us to configure the eliminator. And here it is. They say it one more time. Take note. We know there's a bug. We know there's a functionality that's not working. If you use multiple choice, please use drop down type questions instead of multiple choice. They are giving this to you because they know that that's one of the reasons they got those low ratings. And so what do we want to do? Well, down here are all the different questions that it can eliminate. And so I wanted to eliminate choices for Monday. I wanted to eliminate choices for Tuesday and for Wednesday and for Thursday and for Friday. Eliminate those choices. Now watch what happens. I'm going to come here one more time. All my names are right there. I'm going to choose Monday this time. I'm going to select 
9.30. And I'm going to say no questions. I just hit submit. Done. Now, now, here's my hope. If I come back here and I take a look, Monday at 9.30 is gone. It's been eliminated. Now they will not have that question or that, that number back there again. And guess what? Once they've all been done for this week, I can start it all over again next week by hitting refresh. And it will bring back all the original questions for me back to those originals. Okay. Um, it, it makes it easy for you to do these meetings. Um, now, they, there used to be a, a, a tool just called Choice Eliminator uh, and where you can come in and say, well, you know, how many times can they select that? Maybe you, maybe, maybe you wanted to do like a party and in that party, you wanted people to bring chips and soda and, uh, and cupcakes and brownies. And you're like, well, you know what? But I want two parents to bring brownies and three parents to bring chips. It would say, how many times can this be selected before we eliminate it? And it would remove them. Uh, and it was great. Uh, but the, it stopped working because of that bug. That bug stopped working. So they got rid of a choice eliminator. And there's only choice eliminator light which is why I went out and started looking for options for you of what can we use? What can we use? And so I went in to the add-ons over here and I looked up all the different choice options. And I, I looked at choice limit. I looked at choice limiter. I looked at all these things, choice removal. I looked at all of these, right? And they all had the same issue. And that was, no matter how many times, let's say that I said I wanted brownies to be selected uh, three times. Like I wanted three parents to bring in, uh, three parents to bring in brownies for our, for our party. Even if I set it for three, it would delete it after one. Every single time. I could not find a fix for it. So I had to kind of do a hack around uh, using just Choice Eliminator. And that was... I have to, I had to do sets. So like, I need you to bring brownies for 24 students. I need you to bring cupcakes for 24 students, cookies for 24 students, bags of chips. I need three of them if you select this one. And then like for soda, soda choice one, two choice, you know, so I had to use it this way. And so, you know, if, if somebody chose soda two of two, there'd still be soda one of two left. And so you'd still get the numbers. It, it doesn't work as elegantly as uh, as it used to with the original choice eliminator, but you can still do your party choices uh, down here. Um, I know there's other third party apps out there, right? There's like Sign Up Genius. Uh, I'm sure Form Monkey uh, or Survey Monkey that has something like this. I understand there's other third party tools that are out there. I was just trying to figure out, hey, let's see if you can still utilize your Google ecosystem to do these things. And that's where Choice Eliminator comes into play. All right. Well, that is our super share for today. That was another fantastic forms right here on super shares. And I want you to know this is a community uh, a show, meaning you can be on this show. You can come up here and you can present. You can share something that you use in your classroom. You can share something that you want to share out to the rest of the community. You can sign up. And so if you would like to sign up for a super share, uh, uh, come and join me by going and filling out our super share form. Go to qlearns.org slash super shares. It is case sensitive. So it needs to all be lowercase qlearns.org slash super shares. And you will be able, uh, to sign up and say what you would like to super share. I will contact you and we will set a recording time that meets your schedule between Monday and Friday and, uh, between 9 a.m. and, uh, 3 p.m or 9 a.m. and 4 p.m., sorry. So uh, we can set up times and we, and we will be able to schedule those recordings. And you will be the next host, guest, member, uh, showrunner of SuperShare. So please definitely go out there and show us what you would like to share that is super going on in your classroom. And one last thing before I go. Again, another shameless plug. Please 
if you are looking for another amazing event, if you went to Spring Q and loved being around people and loved the vibe, you know, Spring Q is a phenomenal event, but sometimes our Northern California members cannot make it all the way down to Palm Springs. So we bring the innovation and the engagement and the excitement up to Northern California uh, in the Sacramento Stockton area. Uh, so we are again going to be there October 22nd and 23rd, and you can register for that today. And fear not, everybody. Fear not. We, you have not missed out on session submissions for the conference. You have not. Session submissions will be opening uh, towards the uh, end of April. Uh, so we will absolutely give uh, all the information on how to do that um, uh, once those uh, submission uh, times have opened up. So you have not missed it. You can still be a presenter at Fall Q, and we'll let you know when those session submissions do indeed open up. And we promise we will be giving you a lot of time uh, to ideate and think about what you would like to present and uh, uh, give you that time to uh, to make those submissions. It's going to be a, a pretty large submission window. So again. Thank you so much for uh, being a member of Q. Uh, if you're not a member of Q, thank you so much for watching. And hopefully uh, shows like this uh, 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 encourage you to uh, become a member of Q. And we're excited um, of everything that is happening right now and uh, the uh, community that is coming together each and every day uh, in virtual life and in real life. Uh, until next time everybody. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, hope to see you uh, next time on another episode of Super Shares. Have yourself